Hey folks, Dr. Rob Jones here, HeyDrRob.com. Uh, again, this is our Protect Your Back 101 series. Um, if you were a disc pain sufferer, um, hopefully you watched my previous three videos, and this is just gonna be a review of those, okay? So we had part one, two, and three. Part one was when you're kind of in some acute pain, um, maybe even some moderate pain, but that is when we did, so we'll call this part one, so this actually relates to the video. So the first thing we did, was we did what we call prone elbows or forearms. Okay, so again, hanging out on your stomach, on your elbows, basically so you can start pulling that disc back into where it should be. Okay, after that, we did prone lumbar extensions. Okay as many as it takes, right, to, till we get that pain feeling better, till we get that pain out of the leg, okay? Once we feel a little bit better, we can go ahead and stand up and do standing extensions, okay? Again, from a loaded position, hands back here, we're moving back this way, push that disc back in, okay? We also talked about checking to see side to side. If you're getting a big bite on that right side, you probably maybe need to do some, some right side glides or some wall side glides, okay? So that was another thing, side glides, okay? And then remembering we can do these every 30 minutes to 60 minutes, okay? We can do these pretty much after about an hour after waking and then forward. You don't want to do them right when you wake up because again, the disc is a little bit more plump. You're going to irritate it. So you get up at seven, wait till about eight or eight thirty to do this. And then right before you go to bed is a great time to do it because even if you don't realize it, maybe you've made some movements, even though your best efforts, you're trying to get those hips back. You're trying to hip hinge, you maybe lost lordosis a little bit. You're causing a little bit of irritation, you don't know it. So if you get in the habit, even if you're not hurting when you're over this problem, do some of these right before you go to bed. It'll take you two or three minutes and you generally will wake up feeling quite a bit better. Most of my patients talk about how they feel really stiff in the morning when they're really acute, okay? As you get better, what will happen is you'll start to feel better and better with activity and you really know the disc is healing when you wake up and you're not very stiff in the morning because that means the ligament that is around the disc is starting to heal itself up and it's keeping that disc back in, okay? So right before bed. Now, if you're an athlete, I have, I've got a lot of college athletes, I've got some pro athletes and I've got recreational athletes like myself. Before I lift weights, I do a series of this stuff just to make sure my disc is prepped and ready to go. You know, I had a soccer, soccer player just today in practice that I was telling him to do this stuff prior to a practice and prior to a game. Get down there, prep the disc. If you're hurting in the middle of a game or an exercise session, go ahead and pick this one or this one or whichever one feels best. You can do this stuff to mitigate that pain, okay? If you're getting some pain sitting on the bench, grab your knees and do those seated extensions. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. Seated extensions, we can't forget those. Very important because we sit so much, okay? Now, part two, what we talked about with part two was making sure we use a really good core brace, okay? Super important. As you feel better, you will wanna do more and more and more. When you feel not very good in between the hourly sessions of these, you're gonna to wanna to utilize that core brace and move properly so you don't re-affect re that disc, okay? We can do a little bit of stretching if we are doing proper stretching, okay? We don't wanna bend over and touch the toes. Again, mobile through the hips, stable through the spine, remember that. And again, I'm gonna pound this home, proper movement. And that proper movement always means moving like a golfer, hip hinging, lunging, etc. okay? We also talked about a little bit of what we call glute catching, okay? And glute catching is simply using your glute muscles to understand the feeling if you have to rotate, you don't wanna do it through the spine, you wanna do it through the hips. So just a quick example, if I'm gonna move this way, I'm gonna actually squish the bug with this leg, I'm gonna push this hip back in, 
push this heel to the ground, feel that glute catch me, now I'm safe. Okay, there's your glute catching. Okay, part three. Okay, we were into our core exercise. Core exercise is the biggest buzzword in the last day, or buzzwords for fitness in the last decade, okay? We wanna do the right type of core work. We don't need to get super strong through the core, we need to have a good brace with core endurance, because the ability of your core to keep you stable for a longer period of time is what's gonna keep you out of pain. So we did the bird dog. And then we had variations, we did the bear. And then we had a couple of variations of those. We did the dying bug. Again, variations of those. And then we did the half side bridge. And then we did the double leg raise if the half side bridge was too hard or if it hurt your shoulder. So again, watch these videos if you want to get your disc better. Protect your back 101, and remember, this is not that hard. You just have to focus on the proper movement. You have to focus on the right things to do. Let all the other noise go away. All the pull your knees to your chest, twist, all that bad stuff. Follow these scientific steps. You will get better. Okay, so remember, hit me up. If you, if you like this, give me, a, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment. Hit me up on socials, and as always, don't forget to protect your back.